Now, when picking up a lawnmower to flip and make extra money on, you would think that finding one in good condition would be a blessing. But I'm here to tell you, sometimes when you find something missing, it's almost just as bad as finding something that shouldn't be there. Now, that may not make any sense, but after finding this mower on the curb, I thought I got a jackpot. But after getting a better look at it, I soon realized I had a very serious issue on my hands. And if I wanted to make any money on it, I'd have to fix it. In today's video, we're going to look at this Yard Machine's branded lawnmower, and the problem is that I just picked it up off the curb and not even sure if it works. But after looking at it, I soon realized I might have a serious leak coming from the engine. Now, I'm going to try and repair this mower, but yours might be a little different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it. I'll be glad to answer your questions. So this mower was pretty dirty when I first got it, and of course I had to give it a quick cleaning, otherwise I could make things worse. So when it's dirty, you can't see any of the issues it could be hiding, but after the cleaning, we got a really good look at it, and unfortunately, I saw something I wish I hadn't seen. Of course, the worst thing you can discover is that the engine is leaking oil, and it could mean that the engine might have been used while low on oil and ruined it. However, the other leak it could have is just as bad, but in a different way. After looking in the fuel tank, I noticed that it was empty. Now this is a really good sign, right? It would mean that someone had enough experience to run the mower out of fuel before putting it away. Well, that's one way of looking at it, but what I saw was that the tank was empty because there was a leak in the fuel system. So why did I think that was the case instead of it being a deliberate move? The reason is most people simply don't care enough. Yes, there are those out there that do care, but to be honest, most do not. And with my luck, I felt as though that this one was going to be one of those who didn't care. The other telltale is that the paint on the mowing deck under the carb is dull. That typically tells me that the carb has been leaking fuel for a long time and it's ruined the paint. That would definitely explain why the fuel tank would be empty versus someone draining it. Now before we go on, I do want to at least confirm that the engine does start and run, otherwise we could be wasting our time on a broken engine. Now for this test, I'll be physically priming the engine with fuel. Fortunately, the engine started and ran for a few seconds on the fuel that I put into the carb. Now, if it didn't start, I checked the ignition system for spark at the plug, and if there was spark, I checked the timing at the key on the flywheel, and if that was okay, I perform a compression test. Now, on this type of priming system, the bulb is part of the air filter base, so pressing the bulb forces air into the passage that's sealed with a paper gasket. The pulse of air then makes its way into the carb and into this opening, but there is an issue. The gasket has a tendency to leak over time, which means for every press, it may not force as much fuel into the carb as it's supposed to. That's why you sometimes see someone pressing it more times than they should, because they know the primer isn't working well. Now, if I know the primer works like it should, I'll only press it as many times as it says to, but if I know it's not working well, you'll see me press it a lot more than it says. Now, since I think the carb is leaking, I'm not going to put any fuel in the system just yet. Instead, I'm going to take the carb off the engine and inspect its condition. But as you'll see here in a bit, I wasn't paying as much attention as I should have been. After getting the carb off the engine, I'll then remove the bowl nut, which is also the fuel jet. Now, we'll need to clear the fuel jet, but we'll do that right after we take the bowl off and see how bad it is inside the carb. So surprisingly, it's not that bad in here. There are a few small spots we need to clean up, but overall, it's in pretty good condition. The next item I need to check is the position of the float in relation to the bowl's mounting surface. If there's a huge difference between their angles, it could point to an issue with the seat that could cause it to either not give enough fuel to the engine over time or cause the carb to leak. Now, after comparing the two images, it would seem that there's only a slight difference. That tells me the needle seat is not as closed up as I thought, which is good news. I also want to check and see how the float moves and make sure it has a full range of movement, which ours does. If yours doesn't, it could mean your needle is stuck in its passage. I also want to check the bowl gasket and make sure it's not cracked. Now this one is a bit dry, but I don't think it's going to have an issue sealing. If it is cracked, it could cause your carb to leak fuel. Now after taking out the pin for the float, I'll then take out the float and the needle. The reason I want to do this is I want to look at the seat and see if it's cracked. But as you can see, it looks to be in really good shape. Now if yours is cracked, it could cause your carb to leak fuel. Another way to tell if your needle seat has an issue is by putting the needle back into its passage and seeing how it sits in it. If the wide part of the needle is above the edge of the opening by a lot, that means the needle seat has closed up because of fuel damage. Now this one is almost flush with the edge of the opening and that confirms that this seat is in good condition. After this, I'll then start to clean up the carb. All we need to do is try to remove as much buildup as possible. 
I'm going to use carb cleaner and a brush, but use whatever you have on hand. Now, you don't have to get it perfect, but I would try to remove anything that might come loose and clog the carb. And if you don't, there's a good chance that whatever you leave behind could go from a hard calcium-like formation to a soft jelly over time. In that case, you might be able to clean it better once that happens. But for right now, I'm going to try my best and then maybe do this again once I've ran a tank or two of gasoline through it. Now to be honest though, there's no shame in just buying an aftermarket carb instead of trying to clean this one. You could possibly save yourself a lot of time by just replacing it instead of running the chance of having this carb not work after the first, second, or even the third time you try to clean it. Now, if you have an ultrasonic cleaner at your disposal, I'd give that a try too, but that's obviously quite the luxury item to have. So after looking at this carb, I don't think it was leaking in the typical way. So where is the leak coming from then? Well, this is when I realized I wasn't paying enough attention when I was taking the carb apart. Now the fuel jet is not only supposed to hold the bowl to the carb, but it's supposed to also have a gasket to seal against the bowl. Now this typically sticks to the bottom of the bowl, but as you can see, it's not there. That means the carb had a very slow leak at the jet. Now I could just order a new gasket, or better yet, several of them. That way each one will be very inexpensive. The other issue is that I'd have to wait for them to get here. Well, I'm the type to not wait if I don't have to, so I'm just going to make one using some gasket paper and a hole punch. Now, if you don't have gasket paper, you could try using some cardboard from a box that's designed to go into a freezer. But I've had the same roll of gasket paper for the last five years, so I'm going to use it instead. Now, after getting the gasket back on the bolt and the bolt back onto the carb, I'll then install the carb to the engine. Just do yourself a favor and do not over tighten the bolt, otherwise you could damage it and then you'll have to get a new carb. So when I took off the fuel line that was on this carb, it was very petrified, so I'm going to replace it. Now this one I'm using, I bought over a year ago, and it's not all that good. It has a tendency to shrink in length by about 10-15% to 15 over some time. Now it's not anything I'd recommend anyone getting because of this issue. However, as long as I know about the shrinkage, I'll just make the line longer than it needs to be. For this one, I'm going to cut the line about half an inch longer than it needs to be, and that should account for any changes in length over time. Now this would be a great time to install a fuel shutoff valve, but there's just one issue. Of all the valves I've ever installed, very few users know how to use them, and in some cases have caused service calls about the mower starting and then stopping. Turns out they had the valve in the off position. So in my opinion, I would install a valve on your own personal machine, but as for the ones I intend on getting rid of, I'm not even going to bother. Now you might have a different opinion on the matter, and I can respect that if you don't mind doing the same for me. Now you might think it's time to fill up the tank and get the mower on the ground and then start using it, but before I do that, I want to do a few extra things. The first item is to put some fuel in the tank, but instead of a full tank, I'm going to put about a cup of fuel in it first. That way if we have a fuel leak, we only have to worry about losing a few ounces. After a few minutes, I don't see any fresh fuel coming out of the carb or on the mowing deck just yet. Now this may take a few minutes, so in the meantime, I'm going to lube the wheels and the height adjusters. Now this step is often missed and it's not all that important to do, but it will make using this push mower a little bit easier. I'm going to use plastic safe lithium grease in a can and I'm going to just spray it around the bolt and also on the back side of the wheel. Now this is not the best method to get the grease onto the axle but it's better than none at all. If you want to use a different type of lube that you already have on hand, be my guest. The other option is to remove the wheel, clean up any buildup off the axle and then apply the lube. Now this works much better but it's obviously a little bit more time consuming. For the height adjusters, I would use something that was a little thinner, such as a very light oil, but like I said, use whatever you have on hand. Now, most people never change their mower's height, so it's quite the surprise to them the first time they have to do it and realize that the adjusters are stuck in place. If that happens, I'd use a lot of lube and something to help force the adjuster arms to move. This works extremely well if you have a self-propelled mower as well, but you'll notice it more on a push mower for obvious reasons. Since I have a can of spray lube out, I'm also going to use it anywhere around the mower where I think it might be useful. The other area that's often overlooked is the brake cable. I'd spray what I can on the exposed part of the cable at the bottom and also at the top of the cable. Now these cables don't last forever, so don't be surprised when they get stuck or just break one day. And don't worry if yours is broken because these are typically not expensive to replace and if it's your own personal mower, you can easily replace the inner cable with a thin wire for a lot less than a new cable. 
before we finish installing the air filter base and the filter, I want to check and make sure that the primer is working to spray fuel into the carb's throat. Remember that on this type of primer with a hole in it, that it works best to quickly jab at it. Now to be able to see if it's working, I'll have to take this metal plate off the base. Now this isn't hard to do by yourself, but having someone press the bulb while you look at it would be a bit more convenient. As you can see, after pressing it a few times, you can see fuel shooting into the carb's throat. Now at this point, we can finish installing it. So what happens if yours isn't doing what the one in the video was doing? I would consider replacing the paper gasket that's between the air filter base and the carb then. Now the blade is in decent shape, and to be honest, it's not super sharp, but it's better than most. However, since I'm here, I'm just going to remove it and sharpen it. Now there's no special technique to sharpening it, just put an edge back on it and resist the urge to reshape it, which could take off a lot of material, and this might cause you to have to balance it. So the good news is that the engine started and ran, but the bad news is that the engine is running a bit too fast. I'll tie down the brake handle and then restart it and adjust the anchor for the governor spring to help set the engine speed. So now that I lowered the engine speed to something more manageable, you can hear that the engine has a slight noise to it. It's not terrible, but it's definitely not new either. Now just for good measure, I want to make sure it'll start when hot. So for a used mower, it starts and runs just fine, and even with a slight noise, this engine should run for a long time, with oil changes of course. Now since this engine is from several years ago, it was built a lot better than today's engines, and will take a lot more abuse than the ones you can get right now. In the end, it turns out this mower might have been in working condition when I first got it, but if I had put fuel in the tank, there's a good chance I would have needed to take the carb apart anyway to figure out why it was leaking fuel. Luckily this time, it was something so simple like a gasket. However, it could have been much worse. Now in preparation for this repair, I did order a new carb just on the chance I would need it, but it looks like I can keep it for a different project now. So my question is, if your mower was leaking a small amount of fuel and you noticed it, would you be willing to look past it or would you instead take the time to find out why it was leaking? If it was my personal mower, I'd be willing to overlook it, but if it was one I was going to sell, well I'd have to figure it out then. Thank you for watching, I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.